guys believe in monsters? Well, after this review, you probably still won't. Come on, stop, 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 Oh yeah! Bobo here with Brass Real Brothers. Thanks for coming back for some more hot fresh popcorn. And another installment of <laughs> For this last Timid Tuesday, we're doing the 1987 spooktacular, The Monster Squad. <laughs> Directed by Fred Decker and written by Shane Black. So Fred Decker was the same guy who did Night of the Creeps, which was right before this one. He actually got the job for this movie while he was still filming Night of the Creeps. And there's actually a scene in Night of the Creeps when they're in one of the bathrooms and you can see some graffiti on the bathroom wall and it says Monster Squad on there or something about Monster Squad. But Shane Black is one of my all time favorite people in Hollywood. He's had an amazing career as far as writing credits and directing credits. He wrote all the Lethal Weapon scripts. He co-wrote this one with Fred Decker, but he wrote the script to The Last Boy. Boy Scout, Last Action Hero. He directed that awesome underrated movie called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Val Kilmer and Robert Downey Jr. Directed Iron Man 3. And again, another underrated one with Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling, the nice guys. And then The Predator. <laughs> oh, come on, don't be crazy, Shane. He actually had a minor acting role in the original Predator. And then he wrote and directed that new Predator. <laughs> Oh God, what a blasphemy. It's a shame, it's an abomination. I can't stand that movie. Most people hate it. Anyways, we're not talking about The Predator. We're talking about The Monster Squad. So this movie came out when I was a kid and it tiptoed on the edge of being a family friendly film and a horror movie. It kind of had some elements of The Gate where The Gate was a little more serious. This one has a little bit more fun. It also has elements of like The Goonies. And then there's moments where it gets a little dark feeling like The Howling. But you can tell Fred Decker loved like the old school monster movies after watching Night of the Creeps and then you see this one. He definitely pays homage and tribute to those old school universal monster characters. Basically this entire film. Even starting off in a past scene in Transylvania with Van Helsing and stuff like that. And it quickly jumps to the 80s and it's sort of like a monster fish out of water type scene. For some reason the 80s loved doing that with movies. They love doing this sort of let's bring them into the city, into suburbia. They did that with Masters of the Universe, The Gate. But we quickly get explained to the characters that you're going to be focusing on the whole movie. There's these two nerd kids that are always talking about monsters and one of them you actually focus on the entire time. His name's Sean and he's always wearing this Stephen King rules shirt that's awesome. And you got this other one, the fat kid. They call him that in the movie. His little brother and then this cool junior high greaser kid that smokes. I remember loving that as a kid being like, ooh. Yeah, that's back when smoking was cool. But they use this sort of bullying scene at the school to introduce you to a lot of the characters and see them all coming together. The fat kid's getting bullied by the brother that was on the Wonder Years. And the little greaser comes and saves him while he's smoking a cigarette and lighting it off of his shoe. The little fat kid and the other two kids have this little club, this squad, and they want to invite the greaser in there because he helped him out. So they do, and they're always talking about monsters. They love monsters so much. And I remember as a kid just loving the fact that they love monsters and stuff like that. It's like, oh, there's other kids out there like me. It's us. We're the monsters. Anytime you could relate with a movie like that as a kid, it just meant that much more to you. And I have to say, upon me watching this now, because I haven't seen this in years, man, there's a lot of terrible, like, homophobic slurs in this movie. You didn't realize it so much back then because a lot of movies were doing it, and things have changed so much over the years. So now I'm watching it, I'm just like, oh, damn. But like I said, the whole plot is like this fish out of water or monster out of water scenario where Dracula's coming from Transylvania over here and, and a mommy from a museum goes missing. There's a guy going to the police station claiming to be a werewolf. Lock me up! And Dracula summons them all together somehow at this sort of lake area. At this point, they resurrect the creature from the Black Lagoon who throws up Frankenstein's monster out of the water. So now you got all these classic universal monsters back in a little party. So you got that parallel meaning like the monsters who are in a squad and then the squad of kids who are trying to kill the monsters. This was a super fun movie as a kid. It was one of those ones you can go over to your friend's house on a Friday night when the week was over and you could have a sleepover and maybe a bunch of y'all stayed over at a friend's house and y'all watched this movie. It was a lot of fun, you know? Like I said, you could tiptoe into the scary edge of it, but just when it got too scary, it would bring it back to that sort of family-friendly vibe. And because little Sean's dad is actually a cop, He's at that police station and he has to go to the museum where the mummy was gone missing. He's starting to see all these weird things happen and Sean overhears him talking about it on the phone, starts to put the pieces together and he goes to his friends and is like, 
We're the only ones that can stop him. If nobody's gonna stop him, who's going to? It's us. We're the monsters. They end up going to see this old kooky man in the neighborhood who's like an expert on like all this lore and everything. And he tells them actually like tomorrow is a hundred years to the day of when this whole thing happened in the back in the day in Transylvania. And if Dracula gets this amulet and this book, which little Sean's mom gave him this book earlier on in the film, which is Van Helsing's diary, the world's gonna end. I just remember loving that idea of the monster squad having to save the day. I used to play make-believe with my friends like that all the time. A friend of mine growing up named Alex, we used to play like we were like mercenaries or Rambo or something. And we had this whole systematic way we would go play in his backyard and go through the garage and be like, oh, we gotta get in here. We gotta save the day. This is our hideout. I just remember doing that and watching this movie and being like, oh man, it'd be so awesome if it was real. But everything about this movie looks great. It's definitely 80s, but it's high production 80s. It looks great. The effects are good. There's not a lot of like gore effects or anything. A lot of makeup effects, but nothing like really crazy. But all the makeup looks good, especially the creature from the Black Lagoon and their little monster hideout, which is straight from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But Fred Decker pays so much homage to the old school Universal classic monster movies that he even makes like a scene that you see in the old Frankenstein films where the monster's like with the little girl down by the river. He makes that an actual like huge plot point of this film where Frankenstein's monster is actually a good guy and he wants to help them. He wants to stop Dracula. And that's another thing. Dracula summons all these monsters back in this little area like they're old poker buddies or something just like how do they all know each other like that and why do they just happen to be friends i imagine them going to like support groups where they're the only monsters that can talk to each other about monster problems <laughs> i just wanted to drink his blood one funny thing that sort of like doesn't fit in this movie but it does because it's an 80s film this movie's been completely scored up at this point musically there's not been any sort of like pop music in there or anything it's just been actual scored orchestrated music and all of a sudden they have this montage scene where they're getting ready and training and, and man, it is a super 80s song with this montage called Rock Until You Drop. Rock until you drop. But even though it doesn't fit, it is definitely part of what I love about this movie. Long story short, Frankenstein's monster gets brought back to them by the little girl. They're all freaked out at first, but then they realize he's gonna be their friend. He's gonna be cool. And he ends up trying to help them and he shows them where their monster lair is. And they go back there and a sort of showdown ensues. That's when we get the famous Wolfman's Got Nard scene. Take care of the Nard! He doesn't have Nard! Do it, do it! Wolfman's Got Nard! And there's lots of great lines in this movie, like when they're getting away from the house after they've kind of stirred up some stuff and you've seen a little of the darkness and they've retrieved the amulet. Sean's in the car where they're driving and he's like, if this works, I'm gonna sh We pulled this off, I'm gonna sh That's hilarious to me. So much as to where I said that all the time as a kid and I think I still do incorporate that into my vocabulary a lot. Man, if we hit 200 subscribers this month, I'm gonna sh like I said, there's not a ton of effects, but like the way they kill the mummy is really cool. That was just a very creative way to kill a mummy in the movie. And the Wolfman looks good enough. He does get blown up and regenerates right away. Pretty funny the way he gets blown up and then just comes back together. <laughs> Fred Decker did that with his movies though. He liked to put a little tongue in cheek in there. He didn't want to go full on horror, but it does take a more serious turn finally at the end when the dad believes it because he pulls up at the house and he sees Dracula there and the mom sees it too and they see Dracula turn into a bat after he's blown up the clubhouse with a phenomenal 80s one-liner. Meeting adjourned. And then he blows up the dad's cop friend in the car. It's like I said, it gets kind of serious at this point because mom and dad believe now. They've seen it with their own two eyes. But at this point, they're starting to save the day really good. And honestly, the, the ending is a little lackluster. It could have been a little better for me, a little more of a showdown. They try to incorporate some effects at the end by opening up this portal and everything. I mean, it's good enough. It was 1987. The fat kid has an awesome one-liner moment where he's like, my name is Horace. My name is Horace. <laughs> What a great name. And Dracula's holding up the little girl, Sean's sister, and he says, Give me the amulet, you bitch. Man, straight up ripping off some Ripley and Alien right there. Dracula's got no originality. Portal's opened up, Van Helsing comes and steals him back and gives an old thumbs up to everybody. Oh yeah, and the military shows up after it's all over because the monster squad saved the day. Can somebody tell me what the Sam Hill is going on around here? And then the kids give him the old Monster Squad card. And that's when we hear one of the best 80s songs of all time. It's a terrible song. So Monster Squad? Oh yeah, popcorn's got nards. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this installment of 
thank you so much for joining me again. Also, remember to hit that subscribe button so we can get to 200 subscribers by the end of the month. And as always, if life gives you lemons, make some hot, fresh popping corn. <laughs>